So, so tell me about the the origin of the of the new property for you. Like, how did it come about that you you're out there swinging God's hammer trying to raise money for your gold property, and uh, all of a sudden, in comes uranium. Yeah. You know, well, this this is uh, this uranium property um, came up out of left field. It was one of our um, one of our larger shareholders with Ashley. Ended up having the property and uh, uranium. He he, I think he had it since like 2017 or something. And you know, uranium started running, and he he started getting a bit excited about uh, you know the prospects of it. And um, he he shopped it around a little bit, but no one was willing to to give him what what he thought it was worth. And um, you know. To be honest with you, I think I think it is worth what we paid, and probably a lot more uh, than that, because of the advanced nature of it. It's so, uh, okay. It, so, from what I can see, it was uh, a, a pretty uh, balls to the wall project for a while there, but until the bottom fell out of the uranium market back in the eighties. Yeah, that's basically it. Like it, it, it was, it was a mine. And, uh, you know, uranium went down to 15 bucks a pound or something in the early 80s. And just there was, you know, just wasn't economic. So they kind of, they walked away. It was energy fuels. And, uh, um, you know, it's been handed down through a few different private hands over the over time and then ended up in, in Greg's hands. And, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's got a historic resource on it so not not or sorry a reserve so it's that's like measured and indicated back in the day they knew that they could pull a half million pounds out of this you know at 20 dollar uranium and, and make a profit at it um now obviously none of that's compliant these days um but uh but we know that 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 the uranium is there and and you know that's like i said that's just that's like the measured category i guess in the in a resource type type modern resource type you know when you look at uh, indicated and inferred there was a a fellow that did his master's thesis on this recently and he took all the historical data which we have most of uh which is awesome it's like a hundred thousand meters of drilling which i mean if you were to duplicate that today it's going to cost you at least 10 mil sure to, to drill that so um he he put that into a Vulcan model and uh you know he's thinking that there's probably two million pounds of uranium you know on in all categories there and four million pounds of vanadium so that in itself you know and um that's that's just the current drilling you know that in itself is 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 highly economic when you're looking at western uranium building a mill you know 14 miles away they're looking for feedstock it's basically the same um same system that they're pulling their uranium out over on their san rafael project uh, which is the same area as we are so um it looks really really good you know we we've had a few high level discussions with george too and he's george glazer uh, he's the ceo of, of western and you know he they he said in interviews that he's looking for tolling agreements or jv agreements combination uh you know and that he thinks that that uh press that mill will be built in 2026 so that's what that's going to be our goal is to we got to do some some new drilling to confirm the historical stuff and bring it up to a you know a modern resource and then we plan on on uh re-permitting that mine and uh getting it ready to go having having the feedstock sitting sitting at surface waiting for uh waiting for that production facility to come online is is the plan so it, explain to me like i'm five it, could you roll your trucks in you know knowing that there's a resource there having a decent idea of where things were found in previous drilling could you potentially just drive your bulldozer up and start pulling ore out of the ground yeah they 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 did a decline back in the 80s and about 700 feet of like haulage drifts so it's definitely possible to come back in there it uh the the entrance to it i think has been reclaimed but i have to 
we're we're heading down in a couple of weeks to do our our site visit and uh, do some d- due diligence on the ground there. Uh, but yeah, it looks like uh, you know obviously it was done in the '80s, so there's going to be some stuff that needs to be done. But uh, the lion's share of the the rock removal and and whatnot should should be completed for some pretty quick ore recovery. Uh, well, you know, so there'll be permits permitting to get some uh, dewatering of the mine and and things like that. But uh, we think it's completely achievable in the time frame that this production facility is being built, and we should be ready to go uh, as soon as they're ready to go. So, so this is the knock on a lot of the uranium properties that are that are you know circulating at the moment um, or fundraising at the moment is you know uranium prices are up demand is 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 high um but a lot of the projects are not going to be near production for many years correct you've you've basically fallen us backwards into one that doesn't have that burden yeah well essentially yeah yeah and you know like um this is an asset that i've been looking at for a while like this type of asset doesn't even necessarily need to be a uranium asset but something that uh, a guy can get up and running and get some cash flow quickly because uh as we know it's been incredibly difficult to raise money uh for for almost everything there was a nice little blip for uranium but to be honest with you it's it's not going to be easy to raise this cash either uh over the next little while even on this project i think we can do it because i think it's got got some really nice legs to it and i think that we're particularly we're incredibly undervalued compared to our peers in the area you know on the order of magnitude of probably four times uh, with, with one of the companies next door that has no resource and has no historical resource on it so uh, I think that um, you know I think it's good for the shareholders and and the longer term plan is you know we we love our gold assets and we're not moving away from them but we need something to be able to to raise capital on you know above five cents we're we're gonna if we stay down here and keep keep doing what every other gold junior is doing they're gonna dilute out to 100 million 200 million shares sure. in, over the next little while to keep to keep ends meet and i think the end is in sight with uh with gold but you know right now we're we're at the stage where gold's running really it's a fantastic price right now and we're you're getting some love from the uh, out from or the producers are getting some love. Juniors, it's just going to take more time, uh, and uh, I don't want to wait around. I want to, I want to get creating value for the shareholders. I understand that, and well, you know, in the last what is it week, you've uh, gone from four cents to six cents. So mm-hmm. you're, you're you're managing that. <laughs> but uh, that said, there's been a bit of churn in in getting to that point. Do you feel like there are some long-term holders that are welcoming a chance to pop out, being replaced by people who maybe have a bit more interest in uranium? I think we're going to get some of that. You know, there's there there are gold bugs. Um, you know, on our on some of our bull boards, we've already had some comments of people exiting because they like gold, and uh, and you know, uh, all the power to them. I completely understand it, but. Uh, I've always kind of been of the mind where diversification is not such a bad thing, especially in two two commodities that are you know it looks like their their pricing is both very strong. So I think we're in a pretty envious position compared to to a lot of companies. Uh, to be honest, I can't actually understand getting out at this point. You know, you you just brought in uh, an additional set of dice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, your market cap is 1.8 million, which was already ridiculously tiny when it was just had the gold play. And now yeah. you've got the uranium play in yeah. addition. It's not really cost you much, a couple of million shares. Uh, you've only got 30 million out. So, you know, I, I feel like this has been an accretive move. Even if nothing happens to the gold property for six months, you yeah. know, it, you're no worse off. Yeah. Um, so for me, you've just you've doubled the potential value of this thing, yeah. if not more. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't understand an exit at that point. It feels like you've just beefed things up. Yeah. Well, I mean, people are you know people are feeling the crunch personally as well, and uh, it gets to the point where if if they're up on their stock at all, then they're like, oh, I got to get out so I can 
pay my power bill or whatever it is, you know, some of these retail guys, but, uh, so 50% jump, I guess is justification. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I think, uh, I think as things, uh, things improve, um, uh, in the junior gold market, then we're going to have even more opportunity to, to do what's best for the shareholders, whether that's a spin out or maybe we keep, maybe we keep them in, um, uh, we haven't decided yet uh, on on what that is, and we just got to wait for the future to to kind of unfold and see what's what's the most accretive for the shareholders. Sure, it is. It is a bit of a hypothetical question. Uh, I guess there's no real way to 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 know how you'd be answering it honestly. But if uranium wasn't on a run and you stumbled upon this property, would it be enough to have got you interested by itself? Um, I mean, it, it would have had to pass the economic threshold in order for it to make sense, um, you know, because we're we're looking at it from a near term cash flow point of view. Obviously, you don't want to be losing money off the gate. Sure. Um, and, you know, at current prices, it's it's more than more than economic. And even if it was, uh, you know, um, probably another 20 or 30 um, bucks a pound less, it would still be economic. So. Uh, yeah, I think we would have, you know, maybe the price would have changed a little bit if we're if you're starting to do some back of the envelope economics and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's a it, it's a great property. Yeah, that's an interesting thing for me is like, you know, people can say that you spent, you know, more than you should have. Let's say you spent a million bucks more than you should have, but you've time is also valuable. Yeah, well, for and sure. to go and drill 100,000 meters on a property is not going to be a weekend thing. No. Um, so you've basically purchased a fast forward on the calendar for yep. say two to three years. Yep. Yeah. Which exactly. Makes a good deal. Yeah. Yep. So considering, you know, let's say that Crystal Ball tells us that gold will keep going on a push, uh, you're only going to be able to raise so much money and, and do so much work at one time. Mm. What does it take for the gold property to push its way back in front of the uranium property? Well, I think um, I think it, it, it ends up being the ability to raise money. You know, um, we we are going to continue to work these gold properties. You know, we've got a IP survey plan. Um, as soon as we can get get the thing permitted, it should be should be coming up pretty quick. We did an IP survey on Howie. We're going to be doing some drilling on Burnt Hut. Um, we're going to keep advancing these these things now. The, uh, the the technical side of uranium is very different from the technical side of gold. It requires yeah. a, a different set of skills. Yeah, you know, Ashley is is very much a a Darcy Christian operation. Do you have that that skill set, or yeah, do you need people in? Yeah, I would actually say my skill set's probably stronger in the in the uranium, and the reason being is that it's a uh, in, in this in these particular deposits they're uh, sediment uh, sediment based deposits, and uh, you know being in a lot of my experience being in oil and gas, you know, we we do a lot of geomorphology and uh, sequence stratigraphy and things like that, and I think that's going to dovetail nicely into this. So uh, it's not outside your 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 wheelhouse to to dive in on uranium. I mean, no. A lot of guys that have suddenly popped up with uranium properties have absolutely no clue as to you know what it is they're actually looking for on them. Yeah, uh, but you've got that background. Yeah, and not only that, we've so the I had mentioned earlier that there's a fellow that uh, did his master's thesis on the property. Yeah. Um, he's going to be uh, working working with us at a very uh, close level. Um, to be kind of the the brains of the of the operation, so to speak, and you know, I'll focus I'll focus mostly on you know execution, making sure that we're meeting our timelines, raising the cash to be able to do that. He'll be focusing on the on the rocks a little bit more than than I would. So, got it. Yeah. Is there a timeline? Do you think where where people will see uh, boots on the ground, uh, a little bit of work being done? Yeah, our our, um, our LOI is uh, good for thirty days, and we have an extension if if we need it. But we're hoping to get everything buttoned up here within thirty days. And um, my goal is to have uh, 
we're, we plan on doing a thousand meter drill program as a start and possibly more just depending on how how receptive the market is and in the ability to raise capital um but our you know may is kind of what we're what we're thinking and what we want to do with that is uh you know there's a hundred thousand meters of drilling on this on this property we need to talk to a resource um, group and say what do we need to do to get this thing back to back to compliance status and uh i'm getting a mixed bag of um you know people are saying you might have to drill uh 20 30 holes something like that but uh you know that's that's about three thousand meters which again is it's probably only about four hundred thousand bucks worth of drilling and in order for us to get a get a resource um, back uh, into modern day, and uh, then we can start our permitting process. How long do you think that uh, permitting process is likely to take? Ballpark? Um, yeah, I I don't. Short answer is I don't I don't know 100, percent but uh, I'm thinking it's probably going to take you know 12 to maybe up 24 months to to do that. Um, you know, the mine is, mine was built before, but there's, you know, there's obviously a lot more focus on environmental um, ramifications than there was back in the 80s. So we got to make sure that all those are ticked and tied. And uh, um, yeah, I, 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 you know, our, like I said, the, the production facility is supposed to be ready uh, 2026. And we're going to be sitting there with bated breath waiting for that to happen is our goal. So got it. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, that's a, a a lot of gold guys have been sitting on their hands for a long time, yeah. not really doing anything, just waiting out the clock. I, I got to give you credit for not being one of those guys. To you know, the last time we talked, you you were very stringent on you know you only need a little bit of money to do the work that you need to do to move things forward, and uh, you you've apparently come back having done a lot more with no money. Mm. <laughs> Than, yeah. than a lot of people do with money. So yeah. good work. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying. And I think things are going to get easier. Hopefully that'll reflect in our share price in the near future for, for everyone. Well, 50% up in a couple of weeks isn't a bad deal. Nope. You betcha. Well, let's keep that going, Darcy. Pleasure to talk to you, man. Always. All right. Sounds good.